Welcome to Studio by the Lake. Ben here with you. In this series you'll find wood carving videos from beginner to intermediate to advanced and then uh, occasionally a series I like to call Mulligan Stew where we'll chat about sharpening tools, basic tools, tool reviews, and just a whole bunch of other stuff. Just in case I forget, thanks for watching. All right, let's get to it. This piece of wood we're using today is basswood. I keep my eye out around the local area when a basswood tree is available. I'll go ahead and pick that up. It's usually free. Take it and cut it in about three foot sections. Try to leave it four to six inches thick when I split it. Put it out in the woodshed for a couple years where it dries just to the open air. Then I'll take some of those pieces and put them in the top of the studio. With the wood fire through the winter and such, becomes quite a nice seasoned piece for carving and really quality wood. Best of all, it's free and whenever I need a piece of wood, I just look up there and find one that kind of fits the pattern. If you ever go out and try to buy basswood, it's quite pricey. Normally the projects are well thought out and I'll draw a pattern out on paper. In this case, a spoon is a spoon. Everybody knows what a spoon shape looks like, so just draw it on the wood. There's a completed spoon blank. Let's get to carving. The knife I'm using is a handmade knife I made several years ago. Other than a few handle changes, it seems to be lasting pretty well. Perhaps I'll do a video on that for everyone later. I'm honing it on a diamond hone just to knock the edge off of it, get it a little bit sharper and ready to go. I do this each time I get ready to carve. Then I'll finish it off on a pattern block Pattern blocks designed for various different shapes of gouges and chisels and such, and it's impregnated with Tripoli. You notice I went ahead and speed this up. There's no sense in you watching me carve on this thing for an hour. Some of you will think I'm about ready to cut into my hand at any given time, or perhaps my leg. Uh, as any shade team mechanic knows, that's why we keep a roll of electrical tape around and some paper towel. It's too hard to go in the house and get a band-aid. But when I speed it up, it looks like I'm really working without a safety net. They do have gloves out there, for those of you just starting out, that you can put in your hand that's holding the work. I don't use one because I don't like the feel of it. For those of you beginning, those carving gloves are available, and they just uh, go in the hand that you're holding the work in up close and don't let you whack into your hand. You can see several videos on wood carving on different channels where someone's using those gloves. A lot of people like them. Time to start working on the bowl of the spoon. I'm going to use a series of three different gouges for that. A small, medium, and a large. I also have a little rubber hammer there where I've taken and cut the handle off. I prefer to use that. It's a little easier on the tools, particularly the ends of the handles. Just like everybody in any hobby, you go out and you see stuff at an antique store and you buy them all up and you end up with two or three out of a hundred that you really like. I don't want to mess those up. Went ahead and switched back to the knife here, just kind of doing finer cuts than I was doing before, smoothing out some of the bumps and ridges and refining the overall shape. Now that it's slowed down a little bit, since this is supposed to be a how-to video, you can take a look at what I'm doing with my hand and how I'm holding the knife on that and some of the different techniques I'm using. Either that or I'm just showing off.
Here you can see I've switched from old fashioned into the modern age. Got a little micro carver with a cut solve bit on it. Thing spends about 40,000 RPM. Kind of use it like a pencil. I use these primarily when I'm carving my birds in fine details and stoning in the feathers and various different things. You can see it works a little faster. You'll have some purists out there that'll say that this is not wood carving, not using the old hand tools. But I think in the old days, if you'd given a carpenter a skill saw, he'd happily use that over cutting every piece by hand or a logger chopping down a tree with an ax. He'd be pretty happy to see a new steel chainsaw show up. One of the drawbacks to power carving, of course, is you need a good dust collection system. And you probably should wear a dust mask depending upon what kind of wood you use. Several of them are quite toxic to you. Time to do a little finish sanding. I like to use these rolls where I can tear off a small piece. They come in a bulk pack, 120 grit to 600 grit. And it's nice just to tear a small piece off. You can sand as much or as little as you like. I like to leave a few tool marks, that way you can see that it's hand done, but that's entirely up to you. Since we have a little dead space, this is as good a time as any to talk about finishing these. You can leave them just like they are and they work fine, they age nice in the kitchen and to the point where you need to throw them out, or you can put a food safe finish on them, depending upon your preference. If you're doing something really fancy like a decorative spoon, you might want to go with more of a conventional finish. I'm not going to talk about that. That's personal preference, and there's tons of information out there. You could do a whole video series on finishing all by itself, which I don't suspect I'll do. Time to finish up here. I'd like to talk a little bit about signing your work, either signing it. In this case, I'm using a wood burner and burning my initials into it and then the date that I made it. You don't need to go through all that trouble, but 100 years from now, if you've ever watched Antique Roadshow, Something that Aunt Martha gave you that sat in the garage for the last 20 years is enough to buy you a new house. Your great-grandkids will probably thank you. Once again, I suggest you sign everything. And along those lines, go ahead and keep everything. Over selling many carbons over the years, some of the stuff that I thought was fantastic and would sell right away, I still have. Other things that I thought was crap sold right away. And other people like him. You never know what's going to catch on. Well, that's it. One spoon complete. Actually, I lied. There's two spoons complete. I went ahead and filmed the first one out of focus all the way through. Three, four hours worth of carving and messing around. But if you stuck around this long, thanks for watching, and I hope you'll subscribe and watch some of the future videos. Thank you. Here's a little preview as you head out. Uh, a couple squirrels, a bird, give you a little bit of my style. What you'd expect to see in the future. These, perhaps, maybe a dragon or two. That sort of stuff. If you look down in the description, I've included a link to most of the things that I've utilized in this video. Hey, it was fun making the first video. I hope you stick around for the rest of them. Thanks.